So this video of me talking about how more people should be developing their film at home instead of using disposable film cameras got pretty popular on TikTok and I received a bunch of comments from people asking me to make a video about how I develop my film at home. So to introduce myself, I'm Will Henson. I'm a videographer, film photographer, and music producer from Central Florida. If you're interested in any of those creative topics, I highly recommend you give this channel a follow. You won't regret it. The chemicals that we're using can be hazardous and safety should always be a top priority when developing. Don't develop around anyone else, especially kids, pets, old people, or anyone for that matter. These chemicals can burn your skin and you don't wanna inhale them. So you wanna make sure that you're doing this in an area with good ventilation. So you shot your film, you're ready to develop. Here's some of the things you're gonna to need to pick up. First is the Patterson tank. This is where the magic happens. It's a light proof container that can hold two rolls of 35 millimeter film or one roll of 120. Next is the C41 kit. This is the powder or liquid form of your chemicals. You've got your developer, Blix, which stands for bleach fix, and your stabilizer. Links for where to purchase these are in the description below. In addition, you're also gonna need a thermometer, scissors, timer, you can use your phone, bottle opener, gloves, and last but not least, a hell yeah attitude. Hell yeah! Step one is loading your film into the spools. Now before you remove your film from its container, trim off the lead of the film with scissors, making sure not to cut through the sprocket holes. Then pull the remaining lead back into the canister. Make sure you load in complete darkness as your film is sensitive to light. Pry open the film canister from the bottom using the bottle opener and load the film onto the spool under the two tabs. There are two little metal pieces that grab the film at the sprocket holes and you load the entire roll using a back and forth twisting motion. Sometimes you have to cut the roll from the very end and other times it pulls right off depending on the brand of film. Once you've put the light proof lid back on, you can turn on the lights. I highly recommend that you take a blank roll of cheap film and you practice loading the film into the canister with the lights on. If you try and force it, sometimes you can crimp the film and honestly I've messed up a lot of rolls during this step. And nothing's worse than having to do damage control when the lights are off. And remember, practice always makes perfect. Next, you're gonna warm the developer and the Blix up to exactly 102 degrees. You can just run hot water from your tub over the bottles for a few minutes to heat them up. These Walmart bottles are perfect because I can pop the top to check the temperature. Once you're at 102 or really close, the developer is going to go in for three and a half minutes. Agitate for five seconds every 30 seconds. And remember, you don't need to go crazy with this. Just a good little spin using the agitator is perfectly fine. Remember, the developer is the chemical you cannot contaminate. If so much as one little tiny drop of soap or Blix gets into your developer, it'll ruin the entire batch. For me, each chemical gets its own funnel and I wash my thermometer constantly during the entire process. Time's up, so pour your developer back into its container. If your chemicals are near the end of their life, you can soak them in a little bit longer to make up for it. Now it's time for the Blix. Now this is the most toxic chemical, so make sure not to stand directly over this because you don't want to inhale this stuff. This is going to go in for six and a half minutes, still agitating for five seconds every 30 seconds. And remember, this is the stuff you don't want to spill. It'll burn your skin and stain your countertops. When you're done, pour it back into the container and congratulations, the most difficult part of the process is now over. Hold your breath there, kids. Now we have to wash the film. Do this using warm running water between 95 and 105 degrees for three minutes to rinse all your chemicals off your film. Next, we pour in the stabilizer, and this goes in at room temperature, so no need to warm it up. The instructions say to leave it in for 30 seconds to a minute, and I really just wish they had picked one of those two numbers because a factor of two seems like a lot, but whatever. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Open up the Patterson tank and see if you've got images. Be careful when pulling the film off the spool because again, you don't want to crimp your film. Now you can hang your film up to dry. I'll let it hang for at least an hour. And congratulations, you've now done in one hour what it would take two weeks to do if you were gonna send your film off to get developed and scanned. Remember, this process has a lot of room for error. It's gonna take patience and it's gonna take practice in order to get better at it. You might mess a couple rolls up. I've ruined rolls of film that took weeks to shoot during the developing process before. And yeah, at first it's crushing, but it makes you better at what you do. It makes you take the process a little bit more seriously. 
And once you get the hang of it, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time and money depending on how much you shoot. Developing at home is not only cost effective over time, but the entire process of film photography is much more intimate than shooting digital. You can't just hold your shutter down and take a thousand photos and then pick the best one afterwards. This process requires you to be diligent with your framing and exposure as you're only limited to 36 shots per roll. Then, not to mention, you have to go through the entire developing process. It's a lot of work, but there's a great feeling of accomplishment when you pull the film off the spool and look at those negatives. Once your film's dry, there's a couple different ways that you can digitize them and get them to your computer. Some people like to take photos with their digital cameras of the film. I use the Epson V600 scanner. It comes with these templates that perfectly hold your film and the software that's gonna correct it and scan it properly. So thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you've learned a little bit and have been at least somewhat inspired to shoot and develop film on your own. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and if you have any questions, leave a comment. I try and answer all of them. You can connect with me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, at Hinson IV. Thanks for watching again, and until next time.